My name is Elise, and I'm going to be teaching you how to use Python box scripts in Choreograph. First, we're going to make a Python box script that makes the robot say a given string. Then we're going to learn a bit about box inputs and outputs and how to edit them. And we're going to make the Python box script say a string that we tell it by having the robot recognize our speech. And then we're going to learn a little bit about using the logger and viewing logs. So first, let's go to box libraries over here go down to the templates folder and get a Python script box. Now we can connect that to our global start and our global end right here. And then we can double click on the box and that gives us a script editor. I like to pull that out here so that I get a better idea of the script. Okay. So this script is just a general generated template that we can use to write our own code. Uh, it's pretty handy to have all of this already defined for us. Now we want to make the script say, well, hi there, or something like that, when it's activated with the global start. This global start causes this method here on input on start to trigger. So we're going to have to put our text to speech say command right in here. But first we need to initialize the text to speech module. We're going to put that in our init module up here so that it creates the text-to-speech module when the entire box itself loads. So right after this, we're going to put down TTS equals AL proxy AL text to speech. Now normally, if we were typing or if we were using Python on a computer, we would need the now's IP address and port to go right here so that we could connect the computer to the right now robot. But since this whole script is going to be loaded up and sent over to the now robot in order to be executed, um, the, the robot doesn't need to know how to connect to itself. So we can just leave out the IP address and port. All it needs to know is the name of the module we're using. Okay, so now we've got the module in TTS, but we need to be able to use it in any of these methods out here, specifically this one. So we need to make this a class variable instead of just a regular variable. To do that, we'll just add self dot before it. So it, the variable is called self dot TTS. Okay, then we can tell self dot TTS to say what we want it to. Self dot TTS dot say, well, hi there. Okay, then they left us this handy little self dot on stopped Thing here which activates the exit pulse for the box. <laughs> so that's good to have. That's why I uncommented that. Alright, that should work. Let's save it. And let's run it. Well, cool. Looks like it works just fine. Alright, now let's see if we can change the name of this box so that it doesn't just say Python script, but it says some sort of uh, name that we want to give it. After all, if we have multiple Python scripts out here, we don't want to get confused as to which one is doing what. But for that, what you do is right click, edit box. Now you can change the name to, well, say word or something like that. Cool. Now it's our own specific Python script box. Let's see if we can make it not just say a string that we put into the script, but a string that we pass it by speaking to the robot via speech recognition. All right. So what we're going to do is connect this box to global start. We'll say a word to the robot, have speech recognition pass that word over here, and then this the robot will speak the word back to us before stopping. Now, you may have noticed this little output here is blue, while all of the other tabs are black. You need to know a little bit about inputs and outputs of boxes in order to get how to connect these up. These represent the box's inputs, and these represent its outputs. The same for this box. On the left are the inputs, on the right are the outputs. As we saw here, self on stopped activates this output. This output is literally called on stopped, and this one is called on start. In fact, let's take a closer look by going to right-click, edit box. Right down here, we've got all of the inputs and outputs. 
we've got our on start and on stop inputs here and here, and we've got our on stop input right here. We've got a few more complicated ones in this box over here. There's our on start and on stop, but then we've also got on stopped, word recognized, and on nothing for on nothing recognized. That's a lot of different outputs. The different colors come from them being different types. For instance, on stopped, if you click this you can edit the type, on stopped is type bang, which is just a pulse of activation sent from one box to another. But if you look at word recognized, it's type string. That means that if it recognizes the word, it doesn't just send a pulse to the next box, it sends the whole word to the next box. Let's see if we can make this box take that word instead of just an activation pulse and use the word in our text-to-speech. So we'll edit the box, we'll go to our on start input, and we'll edit it so that its type is string. Notice how that changed its color to blue so it matches this output. Now we can connect this string output to this string input. It should pass the string here and we'll get it here. But that means we have to change a little bit of what we're doing in the script. We have to have a, word, a name for the string that got passed in. Let's call it word. So now when this input activates this method, we have a way of catching that string that got passed in along with the activation. Now let's actually use that string. We'll say, hey TTS, say the word that you got. Okay, let's save that and let's run it. Yes. Yes. Awesome. That worked out perfectly. All right, there's a little bit more that you can do with a script editor. For instance, um, if you want to make sure that your, your code is running right, but you don't want to set TTS here and there and everywhere, what you can do is you can use a logger. This means that you just say self.log and type in a little message for yourself like we have entered the on start method. Okay, that's going to send that message to the system's logger. In order to view any messages coming through the logger, we go up to view log viewer and it pops up right here. All right, so that means that when the activation make sure that doesn't happen again. When the activation comes through and hits this box and hits, starts that method, it's going to print that message. We have entered on start method. It's going to print that right down here. Let's try it. Yes. yes. Cool. That's what happened. It's an info. It tells us a little bit about the box that sent the, uh, the, inf the message, and here's our message. We have entered the onStart method. That's awesome. So if you want to clean up this log viewer and not see any more messages, you can right-click, say clear, it clears it up, and you've got a clean slate to start with. You can also change the different types of messages over here. We've got a few below and a few above. Um, these are errors and warnings that sent get sent by the, mess the system itself, and Info includes the messages that we give ourselves via self.log. Okay, so that can really help you if you're typing complicated code and you want to make sure that certain areas of it get hit. You can say log, we got here, log, oh no, there was an error right here. So that's very handy. All right, so we've made a Python box script that says a given string. We've learned about box inputs and outputs. We've made the script say a string given by speech recognition, and we've learned a little bit about the logger and a log viewer. Thanks for listening.